we're, we're approaching the end of this, uh, of this conference, and uh, I wanted to say that um, despite global economic gloom, which you heard about in session one, despite environmental depredations of all kind, which you heard about throughout the body of the conference, and despite crazy sectarian murderous behavior that we are all aware of going on even as we sit here and enjoy ourselves, it would appear that cheerfulness keeps breaking through. Despite all of that, The Economist reports that in a poll of 19,000 adults in 24 countries just carried on by Ipsos, a Toronto company, that 77% of respondents describe themselves as happy and 22% of these lunatics describe themselves as very happy. <laughs> now, watch this. Hi, good morning. My name is Matt Ridley, and I'm here to make the argument that ideas have sex and that that is the secret of human prosperity and is the grand theme of human history. And what I mean by that is that every object, every technology we make is a combination of different ideas that occurred to different people in different places and at different times and came together and that that is what enables us to have this explosive growth of technology that results in uh, greater prosperity. And in fact, it's exchange, the exchange of objects, the exchange of ideas is playing the same role in our cultural evolution that sex itself plays in biological evolution. Because what it does is it enables you to draw upon the inventiveness of the whole species, just as sex enables you to draw upon genetic mutations in your whole species. And so I'm here to argue that the world is actually, because of this process, likely to be a better place in future than in the past. That in fact we fa face increasing prosperity for a reason, which is that ideas are continuing to have sex. There's a lot wrong with the world. There's a debt crisis in Greece, there's a war in Libya, there's a nuclear crisis in Japan, and a lot could go wrong in the future. But ask yourself also, what could go right? And I want to begin by just reminding you how much better off you are than your grandparents, at least on average. For example, the value of the goods and services we produce in the economy has shot up in the last 200 years. It's not just that we, the rich, have been getting richer. The poor have been getting less poor, too. The number of people living on less than a dollar a day has been going down. There are different ways of measuring it, but they all show that it's decreasing. And that's because people are being lifted out of poverty gradually, bit by bit, not fast enough, but it's happening. And, of course, in the end, prosperity isn't about money. It's about time. The true metric is how you fill your time, what you do with your time, how long it takes you to fulfill your needs. If you had to get up in the morning and you had to uh, go out and get your own food and clothing and shelter and all these different things, how long would it take you? It would take you all day and you'd only get a pretty minimal standard of living. As it is, how long do you think it does take you to fulfill one of your needs? Take light, for example, electric light. How long does it take you to earn an hour of reading light? That is to say, an 18-watt compact fluorescent bulb burning for about an hour while you read my book tonight. Well, the answer is, if you're on the average wage, it takes you half a second or thereabouts. And back in 1950, it would have taken you eight seconds. That's seven and a half seconds of economic growth that you have got that your grandparents didn't. Seven and a half seconds in which you can acquire some other need, fulfill some other desire, uh, or just leave the lights on. And back in 1880, it would have taken you 15 minutes on the average wage to earn that much light. And in 1800, it would have taken you six hours. In 1800, the average person on the average wage in America could not afford a candle. That's a measure of how much more prosperous we are, the amount of time it takes to fulfill our needs. Okay, so we're better off materially, but are we healthier, happier, cleverer, kinder, cleaner, freer, more peaceful, and more equal? And the answer is yes. We're healthier because, look, we're living longer. On average, we live about 30% longer than we did uh, when I was born. 
um, where life expectancy is increasing at the rate of about um, uh, five hours a day. Um, and nobody expected this. In fact, quite the opposite. It was thought that there was going to be a cancer epidemic starting in the 1970s caused by all those chemicals we were putting into the environment that would shorten our life. Here's Paul Ehrlich saying U.S. life expectancy will drop to 42 years by the end of the 20th century. We're happier. As we get richer, people do get happier, both within countries, between countries, and within individual lives. You do see a correlation between wealth and happiness. It's not a perfect correlation. It's not a linear correlation. And there are plenty of rich people who are unhappy. But then that makes the rest of us happy. So that's OK. We're cleverer. Nobody quite knows why. But IQ scores have been going up all around the world uh, for several decades now. It's probably because kids are getting better nutrition. So they're getting more, they're, they're fulfilling their developmental potential better, um, or they're getting exposed to more images or something like that. They're, they're having richer lives generally. We're kinder. We're giving more to charity as a proportion of our income each year. Um, and we're cleaner. Most cities, uh, particularly in the West, have much cleaner air than they did 30 or 40 years ago. And most water is cleaner too. Not everywhere. There are places that are getting worse, but it's not nearly as bad as we thought it was going to be. By 1985, air pollution will have reduced the amount of sunlight reaching the Earth by half, said Life magazine in 1970. It didn't happen. The opposite happened. And we're freer. The number of people living in democracies is going up. The number of people living in autocracies is going down. This year, we've, all, we've seen two more countries go from the brown line to the green line, as it were. Uh, that is for Tunisia and Egypt. And we're more peaceful. Your chances of being a victim of homicide are hugely lower than they were in the Middle, of age, middle Ages. And you probably didn't know this, but the 2000s, the decade just ended, uh, was the most peaceful decade in human history since 1945 in terms of the number of deaths in wars. It doesn't feel like that to us here in Britain because we were at war in that decade in Iraq and Afghanistan. But globally, fewer people died in that decade as a result of war than in any decade since the Second World War. We're more equal. Most people don't believe that, but actually it's true. Inequality has been falling rapidly, and it's fallen even faster in the last couple of years because of the recession. And the reason for that is because people in poor countries are getting rich faster than people in rich countries are getting rich. Indians and Chinese have been getting rich much faster than Americans and Europeans, for example. So that's bound to make the world more equal. I want to end with this quotation. We cannot absolutely prove that those are in error who say society has reached a turning point. We have seen our best days. But so said all who came before us and with just as much apparent reason. On what principle is it that with nothing but improvement behind us, we are to expect nothing but deterioration before us? Well, that expresses my view, but it wasn't me who said that. It was Thomas Babington Macaulay, the historian, writing in 1830, already then, he was fed up with people saying, the world cannot get better. This is as good as it can get. And yet the world had hardly started getting better in terms of human living standards. So in going from the individual intelligence of Homo erectus that could make a stone tool to the collective intelligence of today where we can make a smartphone and share ideas on it, I think we've gone from a world which had very slow changes in, in the improvement of human lifestyle to a world that can see rapid and continuing and almost infinite improvements in human living standards. It may not happen, things may go wrong, but it's certainly possible that we could face a very good future indeed. Thank you very much. <laughs>